So, before I talk anything boxing, I just want to quote some scripture from Psalms 41, which says, Blessed is he that considers the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. The Lord will preserve him, keep him alive. He shall be blessed upon the earth. The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing. He will make all his bed in his sickness. When he says to the Lord, Be merciful unto me, heal my soul, for I have sinned against you. When he says, An evil disease, his enemies say, Cleave unto him. And now he lies and he will rise no more. You, Lord, be merciful unto him and raise him up that he may correct his enemies. For this, I know that the Lord favors me because my enemies do not triumph over me. You uphold me with your integrity and you set me before your face forever. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel from everlasting to everlasting. Amen and amen. No matter your situation, whether it's spiritual illness that you may have succumbed to and need to be cleansed, or it is that you are physically ill, this psalm here appeals to the fact that the Lord can and will heal you if you seek the poor, those people who are in a similar position to you who are either oppressed or spiritually they're down mentally they're down so I wanted to share this scripture with you guys before I get into the boxing so ladies and gentlemen fight fans all around the world let's talk some boxing so last night Sean Porter faced Andre Berto and Sean Porter proved without a shadow of a doubt that he is what he should be one of the top five elite welterweights in the world. He proved that. He's proven it time and time again. This is yet another name that he has on his resume who he has beaten. And this one now is Andre Berto. When we look at Sean Porter's resume, or his, as we say, his fight career record, we see that he's now stopped. He didn't just beat, he stopped Andre Berto. He made Andre Berto quit. Andre Berto was knocked down in round two, and he was knocked down twice in round nine. And basically, Berto kind of quit on him. Now, Berto complained of a headbutt, but it's just that Berto mentally went out of the game. He was out of the game in round nine. He had taken a beating in round eight. And Berto was just looking for excuses to not continue the fight, and the referee gave him an out. Um... This is the Berto that got beaten by Victor Ortiz when relentless pressure, but even more so, he was beaten by uh, Robert Guerrero. So you bring nonstop pressure on Andre Berto, just like if you bring nonstop pressure on Adrian Broner, another fighter who Sean Porter beat. Um, and you will prevail. It's just basically that. And Sean Porter brings relentless pressure. He's very strong physically, and he really actually didn't get hit that much by Andre Berto, to be honest with you. Um, he showed better defense than he did before. Uh, so the list of names that and that uh, Sean Porter has beaten, named opponents, worth the while talking about, they are the following people. So of late, he beat Julio Diaz, who was a lightweight champion of the world, very tough guy. He beat Julio Diaz, Devin Alexander, who was the IBF World Welterweight Champion at the time. He beat Pauli Malignaggi, former WBA Welterweight Champion. He beat Adrian Broner, and now he's beaten Andre Berto. Some of these guys are not full-fledged welterweights, but that's not the point. Uh, Sean Porter brings a certain degree of pressure to you, but he also boxes a bit. And... He really did it expertly against Andre Berto. And Berto couldn't just couldn't get his jab to be effective against 
Sean Porter. But what does this mean for the welterweight division? What does this mean? Now, remember I spoke about four kings in the welterweight division. The future four kings of the welterweight division. Keith Thurman was one of them. Sean Porter was another one. Kell Brook was another one. And uh, I believe the other one I talked about was Timothy Bradley. I think Timothy Bradley was the other one. They were considered the future of the welterweight division. As you can see, things are shaping up that way. Now, I thought that Andre Berta would surprise us. And, you know, he would actually drop Sean Porter. That did not happen in this fight. So I was wrong there. And Berto's a really ripped guy, but I think mentally Berto gave up. Sean Porter literally broke Berto's will mentally. So Andre Berto really does not deserve to be in the top elite circle of welterweights. Okay. Keith Thurman deserves to be there. Uh, Sean Porter definitely deserves to be there. We have Errol Spence Jr. who's going to be facing Kell Brook. Kell Brook has already made his claim to fame by beating Sean Porter. So he deserves to be where he is. He hasn't done a lot in the welterweight division fighting high-profile named opponents uh, to really be counted as a full-fledged welterweight, but I believe he is. And uh, we'll see how he performs against Errol Spence Jr., in his fight against Errol Spence Jr. That will tell us what's really going on with Kell Brook. Uh, but he was considered one of the top welterweights in the welterweight division. And we'll see if he really is that. Errol Spence Jr. will be coming up against Kell Brook. And Kell Brook is no joke. So we'll see if Errol Spence Jr. belongs in the top welterweights. Just in his performance against Kell Brook. I don't really expect him to blow over Kell Brook. I don't see that happening. I don't even see him stopping Kell Brook. I really don't see it. But you never know. He may do that. What I do know is if he puts up a good fight against Kell Brook, win, lose, or draw, he's going to be proven to be, again, one of the top welterweights in the division. If Sean Porter couldn't do anything to Kell Brook, I just don't see Errol Spence Jr. doing it. Kell Brook's too big, too strong to be stopped by Errol Spence Jr. I don't care if he goes to the body or he thinks he's going to go to the body. I just don't think it's... I just don't see it, but... Apparently, there's a lot of confidence, and his trainer knows things, and Errol Spence Jr. knows things, so we'll see. The other guy that I thought was the future of the welterweight division, even though he's kind of winding down, was Timothy Bradley. That was the other guy. Timothy Bradley has more skill than uh, Sean Porter, but Sean Porter has much more pressure than Timothy Bradley. And so it's just very interesting. I would love to see a matchup between Bradley and Porter. I think... Uh, Watching at Porter's performances, especially his most recent one against Andre Berto, it really does uh, open up my imagination to what would happen if Timothy Bradley was to face uh, Sean Porter. That would be very interesting. I think Porter would be the stronger of the two in terms of punching, uh, but I think Bradley and Porter have styles that really complement one another. That would be an excellent fight. Now, you say, well, why are you not mentioning Manny Pacquiao? He's not the future of the welterweight division. That's why I'm not talking about him much. Um, you got to throw Danny Garcia into the mix now because Danny Garcia has proven himself. Um, I think that Lamont Peterson hasn't quite proven himself yet, so I can't say anything about him. But I think Danny Garcia has proven himself to be able to stand up to Keith Thurman's punches. That, that's, that's pretty impressive. He just still got beaten, but um, he's pretty impressive. But he, he's still not one of the future of the welterweights. Uh, the future welterweights still remind me, well, Timothy Bradley's pretty much at the end of his career. So maybe Errol Spence Jr. comes in and fills that gap. We'll see. Uh, but as of now, the future of the welterweight division is Keith Thurman, Kell Brook, uh, Keith Thurman, Kell Brook, Sean Porter, and it's possible Errol Spence Jr. or Timothy Bradley, even though Timothy Bradley's out the door. These are the guys I'm looking at at the future of the welterweight division. Now, with respect to the next fight that happened, which was a high-profile fight, which was Jamel Chalo versus Charles Hatley. Charles Hatley is a skilled southpaw. He can switch from southpaw to orthodox. But 
One of the things we are not really mentioning here is that Charles Hatley had gotten knocked out before. Okay, Charles Hatley had been knocked out uh, by another opponent who is not really a big puncher in Leonardo Tyner. Okay, Leonardo Tyner actually knocked him out. Good boxer, welterweight. He was at welterweight at the time. Knocked him out in the first round. I, I don't know the specifics of it, but he had gotten knocked out before. He had he lost before? No, he hadn't lost before. But nonetheless, a very skilled boxer, uh, southpaw. He was at super welterweight, long fighter. Uh, but as you can see, as much as he is skilled, he never really reached the top level of boxing. This was his first dance at the top, the top level. Now he had stopped Anthony Mundane in the 11th round of the 12 rounder, so there's something to be said there. But what, uh, what Jamel Charlo did to him, however was pretty impressive in that it wasn't the TKO. This was a straight-up KO. He KO'd him. He caught him flush with a overhand right, okay? And pretty much stopped him. So that's very, very impressive on Jermel Charlo's uh, record, seeing he's not really known as a knockout artist. Here he is catching him with the overhand right here. Basically, he slept him. I mean, dude wasn't even moving around after that shot. So that was very, very impressive by Jermel Charlo. And again, this is one of the guys, Jamel and Jamal Charlo. I said these guys weren't jokes. People were saying all kinds of negative things about them. But I said these guys weren't any joke. And true to form, Jamel Charlo is not a joke. He's proving that. Even though Charles Hatley is not exactly, you know, top tier competition, you know. But Jamel Charlo is going to prove himself next because I think he's going to face Erickson Lubin. That's the next guy I think that's a mandatory he has to face. Uh, if it's not a mandatory, it's going to be his mandatory at some point in time. But he really wants to unify with Jared Hurd. That's the guy he really wants to face next. And Jared Hurd is a pretty good boxer as well. So that would be a very good matchup. Um, I would look forward to seeing that. So, once again, the Charlo brothers, they're proving. I still think Jamel Charlo and Jamal Charlo are the future in the super welterweight division. That's just my opinion. I've seen them box, I've seen their skills, and I really think so. And I think the sooner or craft to take their boxing seriously. And they're just not there's just not a joke to play around with. They remind me of George Foreman. George Foreman was never really a guy that smiled a lot. He also wasn't a joke. So I just think those guys are going to really show us what they're made of. Now, with respect to the welterweight division, we have four world champions. We know Keith Thurman, he's looking to unify yet again. Keith Thurman is the WBC, WBA champion. So he would love to unify. Adrian Brown is actually in the rankings at welterweight. His last fight was a welterweight fight against Adrian Granados, right? So he's at welterweight. I think Adrian Brown says he's going to campaign at welterweight now. So that's very interesting. But we have Adrian Brown, we have Lamont Peterson here at welterweight. So the weather division is very interesting. We also have Manny Pacquiao, who's still in the mix, even though he's going to be facing Jeff Horn next, who's an absolute unknown, uh, absolute nobody, as far as I'm concerned. And I hear people feeling excited about the Jeff Horn fight, and I'm like, what? Are you serious? This is, you know, Andre Berto was bad, but I mean, come on, Jeff Horn? But it is what it is. I mean, Manny Pacquiao probably trying to go out with a win. Maybe that's his last fight. Maybe it's a tune-up to face. Terrence Crawford at uh, super lightweight. Who knows? Uh, who knows? But what I do know is that Manny Pacquiao is another belt holder. Now, Keith Thurman, he has already expressed his interest in getting the other two belts. And he said it again the night of the fights that had happened. So we're looking forward to seeing what Keith Thurman will do. I think Keith Thurman is the goods. I think he's the real deal. He's not as good a boxer as, say, a Cal Brook. But he's a good boxer. All right, and he's getting better. He's still a little bit wild with his shots and stuff. But Keith Thurman's exciting to watch. He's always been in exciting fights, and he's sensible. So we have Keith Thurman. We have Sean Porter, who had a good fight with Keith Thurman as well. Thurman beat him, and I wouldn't be surprised if Thurman beats him easier the second time around. Uh, as much as Porter's trying to make adjustments to come in clean and not get caught as 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 easily as he did before, uh, I think Thurman still beats him. So, at the end of the day, there are just certain styles Porter's style just cannot deal with. It's just what it is. He can come all night, but if you don't know how to use the pivots, how to uh, line up punches, 
uh, how to um, how to basically uh, use your defense uh, Porter's going to continuously lose fights against if he was to rematch Kell Brook, Kell Brook would beat him if he was to rematch Keith Thurman, Keith Thurman would beat him because those styles it just they just have the answer for Sean Porter, it's just what it is now with respect to Manny Pacquiao Manny Pacquiao is the only one who's kind of... It, it, he's probably the one that's going to be picking and choosing his fights from here on in. Um, I don't foresee him really facing Terrence Crawford at super lightweight because Manny Pacquiao is at welterweight. Unless Terrence Crawford is moving up to welterweight, I don't really see Manny Pacquiao facing Terrence Crawford at this point in time. He's not even that big enough name. If Terrence Crawford was to say, for instance... Well, uh, we already know this guy Julio Ondongo or Indongo. Ndogo, he beat Ricky Burns, so he's now, uh, you know, unified champion, and Terrence Crawford is the next unified champion. So it'd be nice to see Crawford face Ndongo, which is, that would be a nice fight for Crawford there. At welterweight, Keith Thurman versus Kell Brook, or the winner of Kell Brook, Eric Spence Jr., or Manny Pacquiao, or whoever has the WBO belt, that would be awesome, Okay. Keith Thurman will may have the option of either facing Sean Porter, who will be his mandatory, or he will have the option of unifying. Um, he can even face Lamont Peterson if he wanted to. But Keith Thurman right now is sitting nice at welterweight. At super welterweight, it's a very interesting division. Because we don't have any one person who has actually uh, dominated that division. It's wide open right now. We have Alvarez with the WBO belt. We have Hurd with the IBF. We have Charlo with the WBC, and we have Lara, the WBA. And if you want, you can say Andrade has an honorary WBA belt under Lara. So, how do these uh, how how do these divisions work? Well, Andrade could face Lara. Heard could face Charlo. I think Charlo wants to face Andrade. Um, Heard doesn't want to face Andrade because Andrade they try to make the fight with Andrade, and then Andrade sort of bucked out. And as a result of that, they're not really interested in making a fight with Andre. And I don't know if Charlo will ever face Lara. But right now, Charlo versus Hurd is probably the one that he is makeable. Alvarez is still in the mix for some reason. I don't know why. Because Alvarez jumped up to super welterweight to face Chavez Jr. Super middleweight, sorry. So, I'm not too sure what Alvarez is doing there. Uh, but at the end of the day... Um, you know, Charlo is in a position to unify. Now, he may have to face Erickson Lubin first before he faced Jared Hurd, but I think he would love to face Jared Hurd, Jared Hurd, which I think is a very good matchup because they're two very good boxers. I still think Jamal Charlo is a better boxer. I think he's more spectacular. I think he's much more fun to watch. So we'll see. Arislandi Lara, he's already faced Alvarez. I think one of the fights he should face is Demetrius Andre. We'll just clear that up because the WBA right now is trying to clear up and just have one belt and one champion in their uh, organization. So at the end of the day, I think this is what it looks like. I think it's very exciting at super welterweight and welterweight division. Uh, we're seeing our real stars come to the top and the people who are not really, you know, truly top 10 people getting discarded by the wayside. I also heard Amir Khan trying to get a fight with Keith Thurman instead of uh, Keith Thurman having that rematch with Sean Porter. So he's trying to jump in between Porter and Thurman. I do hope Thurman takes the Porter fight instead uh, of the Khan fight and keep Khan out in the cold because Khan had that opportunity to face Manny Pacquiao and he threw that away. So if I were Keith Thurman uh, I wouldn't try to make any fights with Khan because Khan is not serious about fighting anyone. He talks about money-making fight. When was the last time he actually fought anybody? The only last person he fought was Canelo Alvarez. And that was last year. So Khan's not really interested. He's interested in money-making fights. He's not really interested in fighting, you know, worthy opponents. He's not really interested in that. So I think they need to bypass Khan, especially after what happened with Manny Pacquiao trying to set up the, the Khan fight. And it didn't happen. That was a fight that everyone would have wanted to see. I think Amir Khan should be left, left in the wake. I don't think he's a top 10 welterweight in the world anyway. That's just my personal opinion. I think welterweights to come before him are Timothy Bradley, Lamont Peterson, uh, Danny Garcia. 
even Adrian Broner comes before Khan. That's to tell you how much Khan is, 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 has just kind of ousted himself. I think even Andre Berto comes up ahead of Khan because Andre Berto faced uh, tougher competition. If you look at what Andre Berto has faced, uh, it, it's better competition than Khan, I think. Uh, that's just my personal opinion. Um, he's faced Sean Porter. He's faced Floyd Mayweather. Uh, he's faced... Um, Robert Guerrero. Okay, all of these guys Khan hasn't faced. Okay, so he's faced better opposition. And if you look, I'm talking about at welterweight. Uh, Jan Zavik was a world champion. Faced him. Uh, he faced Carlos Quintana. It was better, better competition than American has ever faced. Louis Colazzo shared an opponent with American, but a younger Louis Colazzo. So I mean, at the end of the day, uh, Andre Berto has faced better competition. Than Amir Khan has faced at welterweight, so I don't. I rank Andre Berto ahead of Amir Khan, even though he's just been stopped by Sean Porter. Okay, mentally broken down by Sean Porter. But I just wanted to share that stuff with you guys. I think that the weekend fights were pretty good. Um, I had favored Sean Porter to beat. Andre Berto, but I was hoping that Andre Berto would show us something. He did kind of show us something. And uh, I didn't expect Charles Hatley to get knocked out by uh, Jamel Chalo, but he stopped him. So, good. more kudos to Jamel Chalo. Um, I think these fighters have proven themselves now. Sean Porter has proven himself to be a top welterweight. In the top five, I think Jamel Chalo has proven himself to be a top super welterweight. He's in the top five as well. And where everything will balance off at the end of the day, we will see, right? But he's definitely a name to be mentioned in the top five. The top five for the record are Saul Canelo Alvarez, Jared Hurd, Aris Landy Lara, Demetrius Andrade, and Jamel Chalo. Jamal Chalo is now out at middleweight. When we're looking at the top welterweights in the world, we're looking at Keith Thurman, Kel Brook, Manny Pacquiao, uh, Sean Porter, and you also have a toss-up between Danny Garcia and Lamont Peterson. These are the top welterweights in the world at this present point in time. Danny Garcia is not really a true welterweight, neither is Lamont Peterson, but these guys jump in there. So I think that's based... Oh, sorry, I forgot Timothy Bradley. Timothy Bradley is another one. So, you know, if you're looking at the top welterweights in the world, we're talking about Keith Thurman, we're talking about Kell Brook, Manny Pacquiao, Timothy Bradley, Sean Porter. Okay. Um, Timothy Brad is more decorated, uh, but Sean Porter has fought the better competition, I think. So, at the end of the day, those are the top five welterweights in the world, I believe. That's how they should be mentioned and numbered. And then we have guys like Danny Garcia, Lamont Peterson, uh, Errol Spence Jr., uh, Berto, Khan, uh, who else? Jesse Vargas, you got to put him in there. Broner is up there now, so you have to put Broner in there. So that's, I think that's what that's what it looks like, you know. On that note, you guys have a great one.